we recall a few months ago when we had to make a special broadcast to shut down the attempt at a amendment of constitution to create the Ruga through the back door in the one they titled the uh, local government autonomy our intervention shut down the concurrence required to pass any amendment from the states and so it was easy to instruct the states not to even consider the amendment propositions from the National Assembly after the Senate had voted. Of course, it died there. And that was the seventh attempt at getting the Ruga, the Fulani colony, going. Now, they have turned up from another angle that will begin and end with the National Assembly. They say waterway bill in which the federal government of course the Fulani controlled federal government trying to bring the Ruga back through the back door that will exclude the states in terms of that decision being taken and uh, that bill that had come it came even in the 7th or 8th assembly it's come back again is Ruga in disguise. Let nobody make any mistakes. The waterway bills that have gone through the first reading in Nigeria's House of Representatives is the same Ruga. Is the same attempt at creating Fulani colonies. Is the same attempt at taking over the lands of Nigeria by Fulani people, citing climate change. The same way they cited climate change for the what they call the farmer Hesman clash at a time it was full and invasion that was happening this broadcast is to not only alert us but to tell us exactly what to do to stop them before they start before they go beyond where they are now in that uh, in that yet another attempt at passing a law that to put the hands, the, the, the lands of Nigerians into the hands of the Fulani invaders. What has been done differently is to try to pass a law that is not an amendment of constitution, citing something extraneous to all of us and trying to jump over the Land Use Act that is embedded in the inner recesses of that constitution. Since we have suffered all the atrocities of that constitution, the Land Use Act that vests the title in the governors, as long as that constitution has not been taken down, no square inch of land belongs to federal government in Nigeria. Any land that the governors don't part with, does not go to anybody and so uh, at law and I'm in a position to report on this <laughs> at law land includes everything on top of the land and everything beneath the land it's only in Nigeria that all kinds of warped legislations including land use acts you know, uh, all kinds of laws that try to separate, uh, you know, land from the contents of land. Water is part of land. Water is only on top of land, whether it is static water, like you have in lakes, or moving bodies of water. If you are talking about 50,000 hectares of land and there's a body of water passing through, one part or the other there's hardly a community in nigeria that doesn't have any body of water but that body of water is flowing <coughs> over land if it dries up 
the land turns up. You see it uh, happen uh, around the streams and rivers every day. And this waterway bill will also annex all the land. I hear, uh, I don't know what, uh, what measure they put to it now. Uh, some say two kilometers, uh, others say more. To the left and right of all the waters across the length and breadth of Nigeria that will now become federal government uh, property. If you go up in the sky and you see the number of rivers and streams and bodies of water that could be captured under that, you will see that it is the entire Nigeria. Because when you take two kilometers to the left and right of uh, all the bodies of water, there's nothing left in terms of land. And there is no basis for even contemplating such a law at this time. What is federal government? In a situation where the federation is no more, that people who sit in Abuja, people who refuse to discuss the terms of the union that has that has been disputed, you know, uh, so vigorously from everywhere, we don't have a federation. Yes, we have a country. We don't have a federation such that anybody could sit in Abuja and say federal government in our collective interest is doing anything. That federal government has become full any government for today. Under this constitution that seized everything from us, from the owners of the land, and vests in a dubious federal government, in an illicit federal government. We can't have a federal government if we don't have a federation. If anybody wants to be federal government to come to discuss any matter on our behalf, especially a matter as sensitive as this. We are talking about climate change and body of water. When, we are not, uh, when we've not uh, settled the matter of whether we're in union with you. Nobody is going to accept anything that will touch anything that has to do with land in the name of federal government because it will take land and hand over to Fulani that have been trying to set up colony, that have been trying to seize everybody's land. And so what do we do to stop this? It is very simple. All the members of the House of Representatives of Nigeria that are in that assembly, this is now matching orders from Ninas. If that bill as much as goes through second reading, by this broadcast, we are declaring an emergency on that subject matter. Whatever it will take, if you are a member of the House of Representatives of Nigeria from any part of southern Nigeria or middle belt of Nigeria, where our people are being slaughtered and endangered by the invading Fulani, who now want to use the instrumentality of their control in that House of Representatives to pass a law that will take over the bodies of water and the adjoining lands throughout the country, we are saying that if you are a member of the House of Representatives from any part of the South and Middle Belt, we will hold you responsible if that bill goes through second reading. Whatever it will take, whether you start a physical fight in the House or you have to act in advance to make it abundantly clear that it will not happen, that the bill will come to second reading. Because the land that will be seized are already vested in the governors of the state. Even this, these brokers also go to the governors so that they can liaise with members of Nigeria's House of Representatives from their various states to say that the title did, in case anybody doesn't know, the Land Use Act that is, you know, uh, that, is, uh, that is embedded in the part of the Constitution that requires four over five majority to amend vest the title to all the lands in the governors. So the, your federal government that is trying to make a law that will impact on ownership and control of land is already in breach. Even that first reading is already in breach of that constitutional provision because the Land Use Act acquired the status of constitution for being embedded in that constitution especially in the part that is Practically impossible to amend. That construction has to go down before anybody can reach where Land Use Act is. And so, as long as this debate, this union, this, this debate and dispute have not been settled, 
nobody in the name of federal government should be allowed to proceed beyond where it is already. First reading is bad enough, especially considering the fact that that bill had been brought in the past, not once, not twice. And look at the person bringing it, a member from Casina. Are we not back to full of the agenda again? A member, a member from Casina, the one that was brought before, member from Casina. It is full on the agenda in continuation of their colonization plan, in continuation of their conquest designs, in continuation of their Ruga designs, anything to take land and hand over to Fulani. That is what they are doing. And so the members of the Nigeria's House of Representatives who come from South or Middle Belt should decide among themselves while it is early to make sure that that bill is not mentioned on the floor of the House of Representatives in Abuja for second reading. If you all sit, we don't want to know whether you opposed it or you voted for it or you kept, uh, what do they call it, the abstain. It's not of interest to us. Our matching orders on this subject is that that bill should not go through second reading. If anybody attempts to bring it and pass it through second reading and you sit in the place, if you have to set up a physical fight, let the whole world hear it, that the people, the Fulani, are trying to take the land of the people you represent through the back door by passing all the laws, citing climate change. The same way they cited climate change for the farmers, headers, uh, clash, force narrative they put forward to the international community at the time they were invading the place. We know the role of Amina Mohammed of the UN on all of this, talking about the environment and the climate change and body of water and the need to preserve water. All of those things come secondary to the primary question of full and invasion intended to take over the lands of Nigeria. That's what is of concern to us. And anything that will take us in that direction Anybody who is going to be involved in it should be ready to be confronted by his own constituents. If that bill should go to second reading in that National Assembly, all the members of the National Assembly from the South and Middle Belt should be ready to be confronted anywhere they are found, whether in their constituency or anywhere that their constituents, they have to be the ones to be held responsible for allowing that to happen. Anything they need to do to prevent it from happening, whether they do it up front, so that they tell the, the, their, their colleagues from everywhere that this bill will not be allowed to go to second reading. Or if it is smuggled in on the day, that house should be shut down by your activities. If you refuse to do that and you say, uh, uh, we, we, we oppose it, we are not going to listen to that, You're, you have to return from the place in terms of pulling out from that house. Let that house be shut down in terms of there's no union anymore with the people who are trying to take the land of your constituents because they're going to kill them. They're already killing them. You're only going to validate for them if that bill goes to second reading. The governors of all the states are equally notified that the title deed over all lands and water for this purpose at law is part of land. So if anything comes from that bill, you also will be held accountable because the land, the Land Use Act that vests the title to the land is in trust with you. That is, the titles are vested in you as governor in trust on behalf of the people. So you don't own it in the manner of uh, going to trade it off with federal government for other, any kind of other consideration. Only the referendum of the people at this time, except something changes in that land use decree or the land use act, only the federal, only the referendum of the people can authorize any uh, alienation of land in that manner such that you allow federal government to take any part. But the people are completely opposed when in position to speak for the people on this matter. The indigenous peoples whose lands are being threatened by this 
Fulani invasion, by this Fulani attempt at conquest, you have to be on the side of your people on this matter. Governors and members of the House of Representatives. We don't want to hear about that waterway bill for second reading or any other purpose. I think we can leave it there. A word should be enough for the wise. Let us avoid the catastrophe that's avoidable.